Hello, it's Mrs Barker. Good to see you again. How did you get on with the practice activity that I set you at the end of the last lesson? Mr Ted, he had a go at doing it. Would you like to see what he drew and let's see whether or not we agree with him? So here are the shapes that he drew. Look closely at them and you might want to use this stem sentence that we were using in the last lesson to check whether or not he's drawn the right shape. So let's have a look at the first one and we'll say the sentence together and see if it works for the shape he's drawn. The denominator is two because the whole is divided into two equal parts. Well, yes, there's definitely two parts. They're definitely equal. So well done, Mr. Ted. That first one is right. Let's have a look at the second shape. Should we say it together? The denominator is three because the whole is divided into three equal parts. Yeah, he's got that one right as well. Excellent. Let's try the next one. The denominator is four because the whole is di Oh, hang on a minute. How many equal parts is this whole divided into? Oh dear, Mr. Ted, you've only got three equal parts there, so I'm afraid that that one is not correct. Now let's use the sentence to check the final shape. Ooh, mm, I'm not sure I like the look of those parts. What do you think? Can we say the sentence? Will it work? The denominator is five because the whole is divided into five. Oh, those aren't equal parts, are they? Those look like unequal parts. So again, I'm afraid, Mr. Ted, well, you did very well. You got the first two right, but I think we need to learn from those other errors. So the parts need to be equal and we need to check that we get the right number of parts to match the denominator. Good try though, Mr. Ted. So in this next lesson, we're still going to be using that stem sentence and the one about the numerator to support our understanding of what these two parts of the fraction mean. Um, we're going to be using the language that we've been using all the way through these fraction lessons. So part and whole equal fraction, division bar, numerator and denominator. Remember those words you learned yesterday. But today we're actually going to be using some fraction names. So look at these words. We've got half, quarter, third, fifth, sixth. Some of those names might already be familiar to you because you might have used them in the past. I'm sure you have, but we're going to find out more about those later in the lesson. Now, for this lesson, you're just going to need a pencil or pen and a piece of paper. Um, so if you haven't got those, if you'd like to pause the video, go away and find them, and then you can come back when you're ready to learn. So before we carry on with the learning, let's just recap what we were doing yesterday. You were really, really good at writing those fractions out. Remember, you did it in three parts. First of all, you had to draw the division bar. That's right, to show the, the division relationship between the whole and the parts. Then you had to write the denominator. That's it. And then finally, you wrote the numerator and we're going to be using these stem sentences to describe the denominator and numerator and it's a good way of checking that you've got the right one as well so if you'd like to get your pen or pencil and as we go along and say the sentence you could practice writing these fractions again so that we definitely know that we that we know how to do it so let's go for the first one the denominator is five because the whole is divided into five equal parts and the numerator is one because one part is shaded let's have a look at the next one have a quick count so that we're ready ready to write that division bar the denominator is six because the whole is divided into six equal parts and the numerator is one because one part is shaded. Next one, the denominator is two because the whole is divided into two equal parts. And the numerator is one because one part is shaded. And the final shape, just have a quick count. The denominator is four because the whole is divided into four equal parts. And the numerator is one because one part is shaded. Lovely. 
Did you know that fractions have names as well as the fraction notation that we've been practicing writing? Some of these words are probably already familiar to you because I bet you've used them already in your maths. And also you might use them in other things. For example, we talk about a quarter past two and half past three when we're talking about time, don't we? So I'd like you to have a look at these words and see whether or not you can work out which fraction they match up with. Now, some of them might be quite obvious and you could do those very quickly. Others, you might need to spot some clues in the words. So let me read the words to you. We've got one fifth, one quarter, one third, one sixth and one half. Have you already spotted some of them? Now, I'll give you a bit of a clue as well. Have a look at the denominator in the fraction notation that we've been writing, and that might help you match up the name with the fraction. And you also want to look for some clues, maybe thinking about third and three, and fifth and five, and sixth and six, can you hear the similarities there? Right, I'm sure you can match these up yourself. So why don't you pause the video and go and see if you can find someone in your house that's not too busy. Or if everyone is busy, you could always go and tell your teddy what you've spotted. And then when you've done that, will you, would you like to come back and we'll see whether we can work them out together? How did you get on? Have you managed to match them all? Well, let's see. Let's share ideas together. So this first shape. Um, we've got a denominator of three, so could you spot the name that's got the th sound in it? Yes, it's one third. Let's all say that together. One third. OK, the next shape. What's the denominator? It's five. And can we spot the name that's got a similar sound in it? It's one fifth. Let's say that all together. One fifth. OK, next shape. So we've got oh, we've got six as our denominator and we want to spot the name that has got a very similar sounding word in it. It's going to be one sixth, isn't it? And then the next shape. Oh, right. This has got a denominator of four and we're not going to be able to use the sound. These last two are actually quite tricky, but you probably recognize them already. If a whole is divided into four equal parts, we talk about it as being one quarter. And then this is the one you probably all got straight away because I'm sure you've seen these before. If the whole is divided into two equal parts, each one is one half. Have a look at this chart. This chart shows the number of equal parts and therefore the denominator and also the name of the part. So we're going to read through it. And as we do, I'd like you to see if you can start to spot a pattern. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. You won't spot the pattern at the beginning because remember I said a couple of the names don't actually fit. They're, they're slightly tricky. But listen out for the sounds that you're saying and see if you can start to spot what the pattern might be. And maybe we can use that pattern to then predict the bit that's missing at the bottom of the chart. OK, so if the number of equal parts is two, the denominator is two and each part is called a half. If the number of equal parts is three altogether, the denominator is three. And let's say this word and each part is named a third. Let's do the next one. If the number of equal parts is four, the denominator is four and remember each part is named a quarter and now let's see if we can start to spot the pattern because the pattern starts now if the number of equal parts is five the denominator is five and each part is named fifth if the number of equal parts is six the denominator is six and each part is named sixth. So should we have a go at predicting this? 
if the number of equal parts is seven, the denominator altogether is seven. And what do we think each part is named? Each part is named, what did you say? Did you say seventh? Well, you're right if you did. So we've got five and fifth, six and sixth, seven and seventh. What about eight and eighth, nine and ninth, 10 and tenth? Can you spot the pattern? So imagine that you had a circle that was divided into 11 equal parts. What would the denominator be? It would be 11, wouldn't it? And what would the name of the part be? 11th. What about if it was divided into 20 equal parts? The denominator would be 20 and the name would be 20th. Wonderful. What about hmm, 57 equal parts? Go on, really go for it. The denominator is going to be 57 and the name is going to be 57th. Wonderful. I think, we, I think we're going to be good at naming fractions now, aren't we? So let's have a go at bringing it all together. So we're going to be saying the stem sentence, writing the fraction notation. So remember to do that in three parts. We need the division bar first, then the denominator, and finally the numerator. And use the sentence that you're saying to help you work out what numbers to write. And then I'd like you to have a go at seeing if you can remember and write down the name of the fraction that you've just written. Don't worry if you can't remember how to spell that name correctly. It's not a problem. You can always pause the video when I show you the correct spelling and you could then do a correction on your own writing. And that way you'll probably remember because you've made that error and learnt from it. So let's get your pencil and pen ready and your piece of paper. And let's all say it together as we write it and then have a go at um, saying writing down the name as well. OK, so the denominator is two because the whole is divided into two equal parts and the numerator is one because one part is shaded. Did you write the fraction as you were saying that? Well, I hope this is what you wrote. Give yourself a tick if you did. And now have a go at writing down the name of that fraction. So pause the video if you need to think and have a go at writing it. And did you write one half? If you did, give yourself a tick. If you didn't, you can always copy it down now. And if you made an error in the spelling, you can also correct your spelling as well. OK, are we ready for the next one? OK, so here we go. Let's say it all together. The denominator is six because the whole is divided into six equal parts. The numerator is one because one part is shaded. And I hope you've all written down as you were saying it, this fraction, one sixth. And can you have a go at writing the name of the fraction? Give it a go. Don't worry about your spelling. Is that what you wrote? One sixth. Excellent. Give yourself a tick if you got that one as well. OK, ready for the next one. Here we go. OK, so the denominator is. Because the whole is divided into. And the numerator is one because one part is shaded. So did you all write down a denominator of three? I bet you did, because that's what you were saying. And shall we have a go now? Let's think if we can remember the name for this fraction. Give it a go. One third, is that what you wrote down? OK, let's have a look at the next one. All right, OK, you're going to need to take some time to count, so I won't start the sentence yet. Oh, let's just quickly count them all. OK, how many equal parts have we got? Ready? The denominator is 12 because the whole is divided into 12 equal parts and the numerator is one because one part is shaded. So 
Did you write that fraction down? And now let's have a think. 12, what's the name of the fraction going to be? Have a go at writing it. Ooh, now I wouldn't be surprised if some of you missed that F in there because it's not an easy one to spell, 12th. So if you want to correct your spelling, you can do that now. That's a, a nice spelling to learn, but well done for having a go at that. Let's just have a look at all of the fraction names and the fraction notations that we've just written down. So we've got one half, one sixth, one third, one twelfth. Ooh, what do you notice is the same about all of the fractions that you've written down? If you think you've spotted what's the same, why don't you pause the video, go and find someone in your family that's not too busy, or go and tell your teddy. Did you spot all of the fractions that you've written down, all of those names start with the word one? But can you explain why that is? Why do all the fraction names that we've written down start with the word one? Of course, it's because the numerator in each of the fractions is also one, and that's because only one part of each of the whole shapes has been shaded each time. Well spotted. Mr. Adset says this is one quarter of the whole. But Mr. Ted disagrees with him. So which one of them is correct? Is this one quarter of the whole or is Mr. Ted correct and it's got a different name? What I'd like you to do is pause the video and say the sentence at the top of the page to help you write the fraction that's represented here and then see whether or not you think the fraction you've written is one quarter or a different name. Once you've done that, Maybe check with someone in your house or tell your teddy what you think and then start the video again and we'll all have a look together. OK, so did you say that sentence and write the fraction down? Let's have a go at saying it together. The denominator is three because the whole is divided into three equal parts. The numerator is one because one part is shaded and therefore, I hope that what you wrote down is this fraction. Ooh, does that look like one quarter? Do you know what? I think Mr. Ted's right, isn't he? It's not one quarter because that would need a denominator of four. It's one third. So I'm afraid, Mr. Adset, you're not correct. Mr. Ted's obviously learnt from that error he made at the very start of the lesson, hasn't he? So well done, Mr. Ted. So we've now learnt three different ways to represent the same fraction. We can draw it, we can use our fraction notation, and we write that in three parts, the division bar, then the denominator, then the numerator, and we can now also write the name of the fraction. And did you notice that in this fraction, I've got my whole divided into three equal parts. So you can see that the denominator is three because the whole is divided into three equal parts. And we can see that three appearing in the notation, but also a very similar word to three. Third is in the name of the fraction. And then the numerator is one because one part is shaded. And again, we can see it appearing in the fraction notation, but also in the name of the fraction, one third. So I wonder if this fraction was a whole divided into six equal parts and one of those parts was shaded, what would change in the notation that we write down and what would change in the name that we write down? Have a think about it. Some of the things would stay the same, wouldn't they? Have a think, see if you can write down and then we'll have a look on the next slide and see whether you're correct. Did you spot the thing that changed? Because the whole is now divided into six equal parts, not three equal parts. 
the denominator in the notation has changed from a three to a six. And of course, in the name of the fraction, we're now talking about sixths, not thirds. But did you notice what stayed the same? Yes, because there's only one part shaded in each of the representations, the numerator still says as one, and we also still have the name one in the fraction name, one third and one sixth. Right, so we've nearly come to the end of our lesson and I need your help now because as you can see, I've got a table here, but it's got lots of bits missing. And I'd like you to have a go at seeing whether or not you can work out what needs to go in those missing sections. Now, you might want to use this stem sentence that we've been using all the way through the lesson to help you work out what the denominator should be and what the numerator should be. And then you're going to need to see if you can remember the name of the fraction. So pause the video while you're doing this. And once you've got the missing parts, then if you'd like to come back to the video and we'll work it through together. Don't worry if you can't find all of them because we're going to talk about each one together and hopefully you'll then learn from that. OK, so pausing the video. And are we ready to talk through them? OK, let's have a look at this first one. So for this first one, let's say the sentence together so that we can write the notation in those three parts. The denominator is six because the whole has been divided into six equal parts and the numerator is one because one part is shaded. So here we go. I hope that's what you'd written down. So for the next one, oh, we haven't even got a representation here. We've got to try and work out how we would draw this fraction. So let's use this, this sentence again. The denominator is three because the whole is divided into three equal parts. So I'm gonna to need to draw a shape with three equal parts. And the numerator is one because one part is shaded. So, so long as you've got a shape, it doesn't have to be a rectangle, that's divided into three equal parts, like this one is here, and just one of those parts is shaded, then that's definitely gonna work in that section there. And can we remember the name of a fraction that has a denominator of three? This is going to be one third, isn't it? Because we've got one of those parts shaded. OK, let's have a look at the next one. Oh, we've got the shape here that helps us. So the denominator is five because the whole is divided into five equal parts. And the numerator is one because one part is shaded which should give you this notation. Did you get that? And let's remember the name of a fraction with a denominator of five. Yes, it's going to be one fifth, isn't it? And finally, oh, let's try and name this fraction before we write the notation. So let's think carefully. Oh, how many equal parts is the whole divided into? Mm, so the denominator is going to be four because the whole is divided into four equal parts. Can you remember the name for fractions where the whole is divided into four equal parts? The denominator is four. Did you remember it's one quarter? And of course, the numerator is one because only one part is shaded. Fantastic. So. Did you manage to get all of those? If you didn't, don't worry. So long as you've listened and understood what you could have written, then, then you're learning, which is great. So that's it for our lesson. Thanks ever so much for all your hard work today. And thank you in particular for filling in that final chart for me. Um, for your practice activity, I'd actually like you to use that chart. What I've done is I've copied the information on that chart onto this was just a, a piece of um, cardboard from a, a cereal packet and I've copied that information on there. You'll notice as well that I've also added an extra fraction of my own at the bottom. And what I'd like you to do is do the same yourself. And then once you've got those written on a piece of card, what you can do is you can just use some scissors to cut that card up into 
the individual sections. So let me just give you an example. So I'm going to just cut across here and cut across there. And then I need this one cut into, into pieces. And then finally, I need this one as well. So now, oh, I've dropped one of them. There we go. Now I've got three different cards, each one with matching fractions on it. This is all, you go, you can see all one half. That was the one that I added myself. And once you've got all of your pieces of card cut out, you can actually use these to play a matching game. So if you turn them all over so that you can't see what's written on them, and then take it in turns, maybe with someone else in your family, to see whether you can turn over three cards and get a matching set. And obviously you can then remember where the various fractions are and hopefully whoever can collect the most matching sets wins the game. So have fun playing that, won't you? And uh, before we go, I just need to remind you about what you need for your next lesson. So all you need for your next lesson is to prepare three strips of paper. Remember, we did that before. So it doesn't matter what length they are, but just three strips of paper. And you're also going to need to bring a pair of scissors along so that you're ready to learn. And uh, I hope you enjoy your next lesson. Take care. Bye.